so. Epsy warning. Um, yeah, there's, there's lightning. Well, yeah, we started to finish Forest of Doom, but I thought we'd do something a little different. Uh, between, you know, that and Appointment with Fear. This is Steve Jackson's House of Hell. This is part of the Fighting Fantasy uh, book series, in which, if you don't know, it's like a, uh, it's not a Flash game, no. Uh, well, it could be based around Flash, I'm not sure, but basically, this is based on a, a book, an adventure game book, uh, that was released in the uh, sort of like 80s, 90s region, and uh, in it, there are a bunch of paragraphs. Uh, so you would, you'd be reading along, and you play the guy in the story, so it would say as a very sort of basic example, you're going down a corridor and it splits left or right. If you want to go left, turn to paragraph 368. If you want to go right, turn to paragraph 28. And you would turn to which paragraph where you wanted to go to and it would, and then you, you know, it would, it would continue on. Uh, there's dice rolling and stuff in it. You roll character stats. Uh, you could of course cheat uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in, in the book version by just saying, yep, I win that fight. Yep, I roll a six, I can throw a butt. You know, in, in this version you can't. And it's got to be proper. So, uh, in this, you are the hero, or the protagonist at least. So, when we reach uh, one of those aforementioned choices, I shall put up a vote. You guys will vote, and then whichever vote wins, uh, our protagonist will do. So, yeah, you guys, you guys get it. So, uh... Should we just jump right in to uh, the house of hell? I just wanna, this is the first time I've ever, I've just downloaded this now. Just downloaded it. So, um, let's let's see what the extras are, first of all. Uh, story of the house of hell, that might be a good thing. Sorry, Final Fantasy, the, the rules, maybe? Settings, settings, music on, sound effects on. Uh, we can change the language, we set the book. Okay, let's not do any of these. Just escape, uh, uh, wait, no. Uh, how do I get out of this? <laughs> okay, rules. Uh, hmm. Should we just go in there? I think this is sort of like what I already know about stuff I can bookmark. Yeah, this is the same as, uh, as a point with, with, with the other things. So, uh, text adventure kind of thing. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So, we can, we can, we can play, we can play House of Hell, play it, you guys want to play it, it's kind of scary, it's kind of scary, you guys ready? You ready? I won't say until you're ready, you know, uh, spooky, eye wetter, the scary things, I know, this really should be a Halloween thing, but that's kind of like a long way away, so, you know, uh, do it. House of Hell is a fighting fantasy game book, an interactive venture in which you are the hero. You can only win through uh, through by choosing the correct path, finding equipment, avoiding traps, and surviving combat. House of Hell is a little different from other fighting uh, fighting fantasy adventures, such as Forest of Doom, which some of you have played. You start your adventure unarmed, with no provisions or potions, and you have to avoid being frightened to death. Before starting House of Hell, you must choose from one of three difficulty settings. This game book has been designed for optimum challenge on hardcore and medium difficulty modes. For newcomers to Fighting Fantasy, we recommend medium or free read modes. Now free read just ignores the rules so you can just like flick through and just decide what you want to do. I, I, I think we're going to go with medium. Um, so hardcore, play House of Hell exactly how Steve Jackson designed it. Nothing has been changed from the printed version. Your starting skill is calculated by rolling a d6 plus 6 with a minus 3 modifier, adding 
added at the beginning of the adventure due to being unarmed. So your starting stamina is calculated by rolling 2d6 plus 12. Your starting luck is calculated by rolling 1d6 plus 6. You also have a maximum fear value which is calculated by rolling 1d6 plus 6. You are un you there are unlimited bookmarks for you too which act by you placing your fingers between pages. I don't think we'll be doing that though. Uh, oh, okay. Medium mode is your stamina of by 2d6 plus 24. Fear is 1d6 plus 9. There is no skill penalty at the beginning. You're also given unlimited bookmarks. Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. Because I thought that medium would be hardcore. If you see what I mean. Yeah, okay. We'll go hardcore. Because I, I figured that medium would be as the game was, and Hardcore would add something else. Um, so yeah, we might be using the bookmarks quite a bit. I mean, you know, I'm saying that we don't, but we might. Okay, you've chosen Hardcore mode. Before embarking on your adventure, you must first determine uh, your own strengths and weaknesses. To see how brave, lucky, and resourceful you are, you must use dice to determine your, sta your skill, stamina, and luck scores. Your skill Score reflects your general fighting expertise. The higher, the better. Your starting skill is determined by rolling a single die and adding six to that number. Roll your starting skill. You start... Alright, we'll do that. You begin the House of Hell with no weapon, so you start off your adventure with three deducted from your skill. Okay, so we'll roll it. Let's roll it, shall we? We're gonna roll it. Let's roll it. Four's alright. We'll go with four. So... 4 plus 6 equals our skill of 10. That's not bad. That's alright. 10 is respectable. Okay. Continue. Okay. Stamina. Your stamina score reflects your general constitution, your will to survive, your determination and courage. The higher your stamina score, the longer you will be able to survive. I forgot to open another Guinness. Um... Your starting scavenger score is in my rolling two dice and adding 12 to that number. So it's anything from 14 to 24. <clears throat> now I think, if this, is, if this is anything like Forest of Doom, I can click the dice when they roll and make them roll again. So if I'm paying attention and we get a bad roll, I can re-roll them, essentially. But you got to be quick. I think. Anyway, let's, let's give that a go. So I'm going to roll it. Uh, it's seven. Okay, we'll go with seven. Uh, because, you know, seven's average. So we got seven to 19. So we've got perfectly average guy right now. Okay. Our luck. Your luck scoring indica indicates how naturally lucky a person you are. Luck and evil are facts of life in the devilish domain you're about to explore. You're starting lucky system and rolling a dice and adding one. A die. Okay, so we got two. Oh, God. Maybe not. Ah, oh, it's two again. All right. So, but yeah, you can do that. Uh, so, we got eight. Not brilliant, but there we go. So we're not very lucky. So stuff that might involve chance, we kind of want to stay away from. The way it works is, if you don't know, uh, you roll, you roll two dice, and if it's under your luck, you're lucky. So, I'll be playing it for a while. Critical. Um, you know, until I get tired. I reckon another two hours at least. You know, unless it goes horribly wrong. Uh, yes, yes. But every time you are lucky, or even unlucky, you minus one from your luck. So then it becomes seven. So you got to roll two dice and roll to seven. And then roll two dice and roll to six. So the more you test your luck, the less lucky you become. Because you're sort of riding your luck. So, anyway, our luck is eight. So we'll be able to be lucky once or twice, I reckon. Now finally, your fear. Great game, by the way. As well as surviving your your adventure by ensuring that your stamina never drops to zero, how in House of Hell you must avoid being frightened to death. Roll one die and add six to determine your fear. The total will give you the maximum fear score you can bear. Your fear score is the number of points you can take before being frightened to death. So we'll look to see six. Okay, sweet. So our fear is twelve. So we're not very lucky, but we we quite you know fearless if you like. So how I reckon that's going to work is every time we come across like a ghost or a monster or something, we'll add one fear to it. I mean, I don't know because this is unique to this book. Uh, but there we go. Okay. Good luck. Oh, well, we don't have good luck. Ha! <laughs> You'll need it. Okay. 
so. Oh, so let's just make sure I know how to do this. Your position has been saved. To reload this position, you must tap the bookmark button on the upper right. So that's what, and that's that. So that will... Okay. Okay, so. That's how, that's how that works. Pretty easy. Look at that dumb stuff. Uh, I suppose it, suppose it is. Okay, right. You guys ready? You guys ready? Okay, here we go. Here we go. The rain splatters, the wind screen relentlessly as you see no more than a watery gloom as you strain forwards over the steering wheel to see the road ahead. Although the wipers flap valiantly, they are fighting a losing battle as the rain drives harder and harder. Your foot eases off the accelerator, the headlights struggle to light up the road. Damn! You curse your white haired old the white haired old man who sent you off along this bumpy track. Probably he meant the second turning on the left. Or even a right turning, the poor old fool. Perhaps this is his idea of a joke. After all, didn't you notice a mischievous glint in his eye? Something vaguely sinister? But what sort of nonsense is this? So you've taken the wrong turn and got caught in a downpour in the night. The rain will ease off soon. It can't possibly keep up this deluge for long. And then you'll be able to watch out! You spin the wheel frantically to the left to avoid the figure who, from nowhere, shows up in the headlights. The car bumps and jolts as it bounces over the rocky roadside and thumps into a ditch. You collect your thoughts. You are... Hurt, unhurt, but shaken. Then you remember what has happened. The body! You must have hit the figure that appeared. There is no way you could have avoided him. You spring out of the car, praying that he is still alive. Your clothes soak up the rain as you hobble back to the road. In the darkness, it is difficult to see anything, but there is no sign of a body. You consider your situation. Are you certain it was something and not a trick of the light? Yes. You can remember the arms held up in fright as the car collided and the look of anguish on his face. His face! There was something familiar about that face. A man you recognised. An old man with white hair. Your heart stops. No. Impossible. With a shiver of fear, you race back to your car. Jump inside and force the key into ignition and twist violently. The car the starter coughs, splutters and dies. You hit the key again. But this time a single shudder is all the engine can manage. You grasp the wheel with your hands and shake it desperately as if to force some life into the car. But the battery is dead. Your car... It certainly is not budging from the ditch tonight. Your situation is hopeless. But now the plight of your car is power mount. Where can you get help? You passed a garage at Mingleford, but that was some 20 miles away. As if in answer, a light appears in the distance. Someone has switched on a bedroom light. What a stroke of luck! It was at least 15 miles back that you passed the last house, and you happened to have broken down just a short distance from someone's home. You button up your coat and open the door. From outside the car you can see the building more clearly. Just ahead on the left, the drive wounds up to the large house. It is a good five minutes walk away. And by the time you reach it, you will be drenched. But how else can you call the garage? You can't afford to miss tomorrow's appointment. No. Go, you must. Anyway, you'll probably be able to drive off inside finding this the garage. You slam the door. Uh, turn up your colour and set off for the house. A flash of lightning lights up, clear, uh, lights up clearly for you, but your pre in your pre occupation, sorry, preoccupation with the rain, the warning from above is wasted on you. The house is old, very old, and in a shocking state of repair. The light in the window is flickering, most likely an oil lamp, certainly not electric, and you don't notice a fact that might have turned you back anyway. There is no telephone line going to the house. You climb the steps to the front of the, for the to the front door. Little do you realize what fate has in store for you. Tonight is going to be a night to remember. Now turn over. All right. Here we go. You climb the creaking steps to the front door and pause to catch your breath. Even though you ran all the way up to drive to drive from your car, you are soaked through. Your feet are particularly wet. Judging by the number of puddles you stepped in into in the dark, the drive needs a small fortune spending on repairs. But under the porch, you are out the storm. You brush the rain from your clothes before turning towards the door. The rain is still pelting down, but an eerie silence hangs in the air. No lights are on downstairs. 
You stepped back off the porch to check the upstairs window, which attracted your attention earlier. Nothing. No light. The whole place seems to be desert. Deserted. There's a picture there. There's a picture. There's a picture of the house. Oh my goodness. That's where we're going. That's our sanctuary. But then you remember the time. Five minutes to midnight. Everyone in the house has probably gone to bed. An owl hoots in the distance and a shiver runs down your spine. The situation is a little scary. Here you are in the middle of nowhere at some strange rundown old house. About to wake up whoever lives inside at midnight. They certainly won't be too pleased. But you have no choice if you are going to make your appointment tomorrow. You must reach the telephone to call for help. You step up to the front door. From the left hand side of the house, a dull glow catches your attention. The light has been turned on. You breathe a sigh of relief. At last, at least someone is awake. You consider your options. There is an elaborate knocker in the middle of the door and a bell and a and a bell pull hanging down to the right. So what do we do? Do we wrap the door with the knocker? Do you pull the cord? Or you could creep around the house to investigate the light. So, what do we do? So every question is going to be do you? Or do we, I suppose. Okay, so we do the knocker. Do we do the cord? Or do we investigate the light? Make your choice. The game begins. It's even. It's even between two of them. Oh, it's very even. Oh, one's pulling ahead. Thankfully. All right. <laughs> you like knocker? Well, it seems that others do as well. So, 56% of you, as you know, said that we should just knock on the door with the uh, with the knocker. A few moments later, the door handle turns slowly and the door opens. Standing in the doorway is a tall man dressed in a dark suit with tails. His long face is sullen. Yes, he asks indignantly. You smile nervously and explain your situation. Your car is broken down, you need to reach a telephone and you're soaked to the skin. The man's face remains expressionless. Come in, he orders. The master is expecting you. Follow me. He leads you to a reception hall and tells you to sit down while he informs his master of your arrival. You sit down in a sordid, solid carved chair and look around. A sordid chair. The reception hall is certainly not what you would have expected from the outside. It is elegantly decorated with rich tapestries and fine oak panels. A number of portraits line the walls. A sturdy 16th century table is set against the wall. Alright, so what are we going to do? Uh, are we going to Are we going to wait? Are we going to Are we going to look at the paintings? Or are we going to uh, hunt for a telephone? What are we going to do? Masses are speaking. The ironic thing is, uh, IYT, is that, you know, what if, what if you just play this completely straight? Uh, because you're all, you're all like, oh, I'm gonna uh, look at the painting. But what if you just wait for the host to arrive? And then he does, and he's just this bloke who's like, oh, yeah, sorry, we don't have one. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, you can borrow my car and go, you know, and then you can go back. Uh, and you know to the garage and stuff and 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 tell them because I mean think about it it's midnight the garage isn't going to be open anyway so <laughs> I don't know if you guys have mentioned this in the chat because obviously I've been reading but uh it's you know what good is the phone gonna do you exactly at midnight to fix your car it's gonna you can leave a message but <laughs> this is silly anyway we've got to look at the paintings 
We're going to look at the paintings. Yeah, we can't be rude, can we? So we'll, we'll just, like, wander around and look at the paintings. Alright, fine. So the paintings. Three portraits are particularly interesting. We look at the beautiful young woman wearing a tiara. We look at a middle-aged party gentleman wearing half-moon glasses. We look at an elderly woman with grey hair and cold expression. Alright, so do you... Do you want to look at the, uh, the young woman? The, uh... Where are they? The young woman, the middle-aged man, or the elderly woman? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't show she's, I mean, she's wearing a tiara. She might not be wearing anything else, you know? <laughs> she's just like, she's wearing a tiara, but the gentleman's just wearing glasses, you know? And the woman, the woman's just wearing a cold expression. But anyway, obviously, strangely enough, you guys want to look at the young woman. <laughs> okay. Which honestly I think is what the writer would have uh, kind of suspected. Because obviously the demographic was, was, was male, generally sort of like in teens. So like, oh yeah, beautiful, yeah, 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 yeah. There might be a picture of her, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Oh! Hooray! We got a uh, achievement unlocked. Okay, a plaque beneath the painting reads, L "Lady Margaret of Danvers, 1802 to 1834." You stand and admire her beauty and wonder why she died so young. As you are staring at her face, you suddenly blink and look again. Didn't you see her lips moving? Surely not. A whisper reaches your ears, but you cannot make it out. Uh. Out its message. You lean forward and put your ear to the lips. A soft woman's voice is speaking to you. Stranger, beware of this place, for it is cursed. Many have succumbed to its power, myself included. The little evil lord Kelnor will already be plotting your death. Drink not his white wine, or if you can, be gone. Escape while you may. You step back, aghast. What sort of place is this? A creepy run-down old building filled with priceless antiques and paintings which talk? A cold prickle runs down your neck as you gain one fear point, but also a clue. Uh, well, alright, do you wanna, do you wanna... Do you wanna run for the door, or do you wanna... Do you wanna wait? Hey, don't forget, I think I have my character sheet here as well. Adventure sheet is the same thing. It doesn't... Oh yeah, fear 1 out of 12. So this gives us our stats and stuff. Things you have learned. Avoid drinking the white wine. Lord Kelmar will be plotting my death. And we're unarmed. So that's our... Uh, what else have we got? Have we got a map or anything? Options. Dice rolling. Retro look. Hmm. That works a little better actually for me. Dice rolling are uh, on. Maybe off. No on. I want to see the dice. Okay. Uh. Okay. So what do we do? Um. What do we do? Oh, oh, it's even. It's completely even, guys. It is completely dead heat even. If you haven't voted, please vote. Please, somebody vote. Absolutely dead heat. 50-50. Straight down the middle. Oh, come on. There must be someone in the chat who hasn't voted. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Hit one of the buttons. <gasps> Aren't they lovely buttons? Oh, thank you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Actually, three of you did. 
Oh yeah, you all ran for the door. Well, the other th the people who just voted. Uh, you all ran for the door. Okay, so we're gonna run for the door. We are leaving! Goodbye! And you escape. Game over. Well, well we're gonna see, Cobalt. We're gonna see. Alright, we're gonna run for the door. Pull, okay, and... Right, okay. Uh, turn, okay, there we go. Run for the door. You race the... Oh, God. You race to the door and twist the handle. Ah! You stifle the scream and release the handle. Um, immediately, as electric shot runs up your arm, lose two stamina points. Oh, dear. It's trapped. It is indeed a trap. To kind of phrase. Oh, Mal. Why even a mod? I mean, you're such a you're such a bad influence. No, no, well, I don't. I certainly don't. <laughs> does any Does anybody know? Yeah, I don't think anyone knows that reference. Okay, some people do. Judge eyes at the end. Oh, I'm seeing that. Okay, anyway, 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 anyway. One per if if that one person didn't, if if Pem didn't, Mal. Then you'd be in trouble. <laughs> you'd have to explain it. <laughs> and yeah, anyway. So anyway, yeah, anyway. Didn't work. Footsteps! Someone is coming. The tall man you met earlier walks in, opening the door to another tall man dressed in a red smoking jacket. May I present Lord Kenlaw Kelnor? The Earl of Drumner. The butler announces. The Earl holds out his hand and you shake it. His grip is strong and his eyes pierce yours. His lips widen and to a soft smile, you begin to tell him of your predicament, but he holds up his hand. Please, I can see you have been caught in this filthy storm. Let us sit by the fire and we will see whether we can help. Franklins, tell the cook to prepare some food for our visitor. You protest that you do not wish to be in any trouble, but the host ignores you and leads you to your drawing room, uh, where a f to a drawing room where the fire is burning. Yes, trust him. Uh, you take off your coat and sit down. The heat of the fire makes you feel comfortable once more. Franklin's returns with two glasses of brandy. While you relax, will you relax, drink the brandy, and ask to use the telephone? Or will you see what he asks uh, by turning to 111? Okay, so what we're going to we're going to, uh, we're going to drink and ask, or are we going to wait and see? So our choices are, relax, drink the brandy, and ask if you want to use a telephone. Now don't forget, Avenger Sheet. Avoid drinking the white wine. Yeah? Avoid drinking the white wine. Not brandy, the white wine. This guy's plotting our death. That's true. Yeah. But, you know, you might as well be drunk for it. And, you know, if he's plotting your death, the last thing you want to appear is rude. But! But! The masses have spoken. The hive mind has decided that we are going to wait and see what he asks you by turning to 111. Your host is a little annoyed by your nervousness. Come, come, he says. There's no need to be afraid. Has your little accident caused you to lose your nerve? Drink your brandy. You'll soon forget your fears. As you watch him, your mind begins to play tricks on you. Is his expression one of genuine concern for your welfare? Or is there a hint of something secretive in his eyes and smile? You shiver, and your fear of the situation is evident. You gain one fear point. <laughs> Good thing we rolled 12. Uh... A short while later, Franklin's appears. Your meal is served, sir, he says to the Earl. You both rise and go through to the dining room. Oh, bad choice, guys. Bad choice. The dining room looks magnificent. Long table stretches between two fine chairs and is laid with gleaming silver cutlery. A rich red wallpaper, red wallpaper covers the wall and the room is lit by a sparkling chandelier bristling with candles which hangs from the ceiling. Obviously that's what chandeliers do. You take a seat and the butler moves behind you to offer you wine. Which wine would you like to drink? Would you choose the white wine or the red? This is where we find out that the woman chose the white but they're both poisoned. <laughs> but you know 
All right, and just to uh, an adventure sheet, you know, uh, avoid drinking the white wine. So says a ghost of a beautiful young woman wearing nothing but a tiara. Well, apparently, we're going to trust a beautiful young woman wearing nothing but a tiara. Because 69% of you decided that we're going to drink the red wine. The wine is impeccable. A fine vintage. Soup follows, and then you may choose between two dishes for your main course. If you would like lamb, would you prefer duck? You can tell your host that you're already eating and you are not hungry. Are you a vegetarian? Yeah? So, alright, hang on. Lamb. Duck. Veggie. How are they cooked? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what, what side? What, what side dish? You know, what, what sauces? Do they come with chips? Huh. Oh, I like it, Red Star Lenin. Hi, by the way, I haven't certainly noticed you. Well. Lamb to the slaughter, duck out of harm's way. That's nice. And it does seem, the lamb is indeed silence, yes, that people agree with you because people have chosen duck. They do prefer the duck. Gotta be careful that when I reselect this window, I don't click on one of these by accident. Your mouth waters as roast duck is laid before you. The earl is having the same when you both chat as you eat. He wants to know how you came to be driving along this road in the middle of the night. And you tell him about the old man's directions. You ask him about him, about himself and his family. You know, because this guy's plotting you down for, but you might as well get to know him first, right? Know your enemy. The Earl of Drumner is the last survivor of his family. His estate stretches for miles around the house. At one time, the estate was prosperous with many tenants, tenant farmers cultivating his land and providing a healthy income for his family. But things started to change. His sister died at the age of 32 under mysterious circumstances. Was that woman his sister? Because she was about the age, wasn't she? We didn't really pay attention to the name. Oh my goodness. Rewind the tape, guys. What was her name? She was found dead in a clearing in the wo in the woods with strange marks on her neck. News travelled fast and the ignorant peasants started muttering about witchcraft and black magic. In their eyes, the house was cursed. Pure superstitious nonsense, of course. But gradually, the farmers moved to new pastures, avoiding the estate. She never gave an M. I thought it gave... Uh, she didn't, but there was a plaque under it. Yeah. And then was under the painting, but... Uh, anyway. By now you have finished your meal. Franklin's returns to offer you fruit, cheese, coffee, and branding. Brandy. Which will you choose? Oh, God. Alright. Uh, do we? Do we? Alright, I gotta, I gotta move this. Just to you guys, is it? Okay. Uh... Alright, so which one do we have? Which one do we scuff our faces with? Hey, where's T? Just a nice cup of tea, please. <laughs> so this saw isn't set in England, you know? <laughs> we could, we could, you know, sort of like ascertain that, that there's definitely not set in England. No one has offered anybody a nice cup of tea yet. The rain, I was thinking, yeah, it could be, you know, but, uh, no. Okay, so, hmm. Where is it set? It doesn't say. Mel, let's say. It's like, you know, ambiguous on purpose. 
yeah, plus coffee, it means it's America, doesn't it? You know, so we can sort of like assume. Except Steve, Steve Jackson is English, so anyway, uh, or at least from the is British. All right, so cheese and brandy is the way we're gonna go, which I do support. An earl in America? Yeah, that's true, Dragonster. No, they don't. Well, don't be silly. Anyway, uh, yeah, cheese and brandy. <clears throat> yeah, but nobody over here offers people coffee, you know? it's It tends to go a bit like, you know, cup of tea, coffee, you know? It's like, you know... <laughs> So, you know, it can't be England. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, cheese and coffee. The butler brings you a plate of cheese and a steaming hot pot of coffee. Oh yeah, cheese and coffee, you're not drinking brandy. Oh well, never mind, you know. No much difference, it's mild, really. Um, He cuts you up. I don't know, I'm gonna... Okay, we cut you a portion of cheese and pours your coffee into a china cup. The conversation continues. You finish your meal, the Earl rises to his feet saying, Our conversation has been most enjoyable, but now you must be tired. Frankens will show you to your room. Let us retire. Strangely enough, guys, I'm reading Dracula right now, and this is kind of similar. Obviously, it's much more sped up and stuff, but... Um, you know, when Jonathan first goes to the castle, it's very, you know, he, they dine and stuff, you know, and it's all very civilized, but yeah. Um, you stand up. He's right. You are tired and it's well past midnight. You stumble to reach out to the steady, uh, to steady yourself against the table. Phew, you didn't realize you were that tired. Oh, I've had a little too much to drink. Well, you only had coffee, didn't you? Uh, your head's spinning and the voice of your host becomes part of a background noise which is getting louder and louder in your ears. Eventually you collapse to the ground and lose consciousness. <sighs> wow. And the sexy ladies come out. Well they might, they might, them. They might. We'll never know. I know, one glass of wine. Yeah. Didn't even have any brandy. You open your eyes, your head is spinning, and it's some time before you are fully aware of the fact that your hands and feet are bound. The room you are in is empty, but you work out a plan. You will hop over to the window, break the glass, and use it to cut yourself free. Pulling yourself uh, to your feet is awkward, but you manage it, and with a mixture of hops and shuffles, you arrive at the window. Outside, the wind is blowing the, and the rain against the window panes. Will you go ahead and smash the window with your hands? something of a risky business or will you instead test your luck now let's not forget our luck is eight you roll two dice if the re result is eight or under we're lucky every time you test your luck it's reduced by one so next time we test our luck we'll have to roll under seven then six and so on so the chances are that in this one we would be lucky uh <laughs> but uh yeah we'll see so So, test luck, or, or just, don't. <laughs> so, uh, Tom says it's too early, it's even, it's dead, it's a dead heat so far, but I know there are some other votes to come in. Absolutely dead heat so far. Proper Americans don't require luck. <laughs> but are we American? You know, because, okay, the game features coffee, but it also features an Earl. You know? So, I mean, this doesn't have to be, you know, an English-speaking country. I mean, it's, it's, it's translated, but, you know, it could be somewhere like, you know, East European. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were played as a British guy suffering from tea withdrawal. Yes, it's, you know, he would have the shakes and stuff. Well, very close, guys, but very close indeed. Every 
Um, vote counted in that in that instance, but yep, thirteen to fourteen. We are uh, we are not going to test our luck. You grit your teeth and sh and shove your bound hands against the window pane. Rope first. Your first blow is not hard enough to break the glass, so you try again. This time, the glass shatters and some large pieces fall onto the floor. But your desperate action does not leave you unhurt. You receive a nasty gash uh, on your left wrist, which reduces your stamina by two points. So we are now down to 15 out of 19 stamina, because we lost two from the electric shot as well. But... You cut yourself free I managed to uh, massage your wrists to get the circulation moving again. So I, I guess what happened there was that if you passed your luck test... Why is stamina treated like health? Because it is. That's just what it is. You know? So it's what they call it. Um, you, you tested your luck there and I think... You know, at the surface, it just looks like you have, you would have avoided two stamina, which uh, you know damage, which I, I think is worth not testing for. But um, you know, we'll, we'll see because you know I don't know whether that's the case or not. But you know, it just looks from the surface like that was the case. Uh, okay, you got yourself free of your wrist to get the circulation moving again, which bleeding already. But yeah, you walk over to the door to try it. It's not locked. You try the handle, open it a little, and look outside. Your room is on the first floor landing. Well, it's definitely America, then. Uh, wait a minute. Ground floor, first floor. First floor landing. Oh. No. Yeah. So, uh... So it's not America. There you go. We can, f we can confirm. It's not America. <clears throat> um... Facing the door is a balustrade. Uh, looking over the banisters, you can see the entrance to the hall below. Uh, you, to your left, there are two doors in the corner of the landing, which runs along to the right. If you wish to go this way, turn to that. Looking to your right, the landing runs past another door, and then turns to the left to go this way, turn to that. So that's the classic thing. Do you want to go left or right? So to your left there are two doors in the corner of the landing which runs along to the right. To the right, uh, past another door and then turns to the left. So it's like a, you know, it's a square, it's a circle sort of thing. Circular square, you know what I mean. Yeah, makes sense. Again, pretty much dead heat. There's not much to go on, I know. Like there's two doors one way and one door the other. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty, pretty even. Dead heat again. Are you asking me about consuming shadow? I haven't played it, Duke. I haven't, I haven't played it. I haven't played it. Dead heat again. Dead heat. Complete dead heat. If you haven't voted, please vote. Oh, someone voted. We're gonna go left because apparently left is right. Right is not right. Left is right. So you want to go that way. So, two doors in the corner of the landing, which runs along to the right. Okay. You walk up to the two doors in the corner of the balcony. The one on your left is named uh, Balthus, and the one in front of you has no name. Okay, so we've got doors with names now. If you want to enter the Balthus room, uh, do you want to go through the other door, or do you want to continue down the landing? Okay, so we... Balthus? We don't know what Balthus means, do we? Let's have a look. I haven't heard Balthus before. Let's have a quick look here. Uh, okay, we, we, potential for a lot of notes here. Uh, early surviving, last surviving member. State stretches for miles. 
Elle's sister died mysteriously strange mark on her neck, so I collapsed at dinner. Okay. We learned that we collapsed at dinner. I like that. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to go through Balthus. We don't know what Balthus means, or the, the other door. Or just continue. Could be Italy. Or France. They drink a lot of coffee in France. Heathens. Uh, so yeah. Could be somewhere like that. We don't have allies in France. Well, well, well it, 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 it can't, it can't, I'm sorry, it just can't be Britain. It can't be, because no, there's no tea. Like your cheese too, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, it's really close, but I'm going to stop it there. So, uh, yeah, 10 votes, 9 votes, and 7 votes, but Balthus wins. Okay, we're going through there. Like I say, it could, it could be translated. Maybe tease the old kryptonite. Well, that, hmm, could be. Uh... This is the house of hell in Britain. Yeah, that, that could well be it. Maybe Ireland. Maybe Ireland. That's a good, yeah. Anyway, the room you have entered is bare. Pinstriped wallpaper covers the wall, strangely enough. A, ha uh, a hearth is set in the center of uh, one wall. And on the metal piece, there is a small wooden box. Curtains are pulled together along the other wall, but they hung hang awkwardly. Uh, bulging and in natural places. Okay, do you want to investigate the bulging curtains? Do you want to open the box on the mantelpiece, or do you want to leave the room? All right, so. It's too big to be my house. And there's no tea. It's quite interesting because, you know, we're getting a lot of uh, choices here which are split in the chat right down the middle. This is another one. Yeah, it's like the third or fourth in a row. But I suppose it's because we've got, like, very little to go on. But even so, you know, with uh, Forest of Doom and Appointment with Fear, we never really had this many close calls. But in this, you guys are really just split about what we do. But we do have a winner this one and it is to look at the curtains and see why they're bulging can't stab them we don't have well we, we did have that we could have kept some glass couldn't we and keep and use that as a weapon but we didn't think of that int three remember all right so investigate the curtains slowly and quietly you walk up to the curtain there is no movement from it you grab the left hand curtain and flay it open! There's a full length window behind which is barred on, out, on the outside, but nothing is hiding there. You take hold of the other curtain, but before you move it, the bulges you notice come to life! Oh crap! Oh my god! We've prepared the curtain. A heavy blow hits you in the chest and knocks you backwards on the floor. You lose two stamina points! Do you have enough stamina left? Yes, we do. We're still alive. It's the mother-in-law. You pick yourself up quickly and the curtain slides to one side. A human figure steps out. Its skin is dirt is a dirty green colour. Its eyes its wide eyes stare at you. Uh, yet through you, its jaw gapes open to reveal a mouthful of half rotten teeth. Oh yeah, it must be England then. It wears ragged clothes and it is advancing towards you. You get two fear points. You must fight! 
Okay, so the zombie has six. Oh, we have the same amount of skill, which is. Oh, yeah, because we have minus three skill, don't we? That kind of sucks, doesn't it? I can't re, I can't re roll these. Um, now, when you test your luck, you can add, I think, a point of damage if you roll lucky. But by default, you do. Uh, two damage. So there's no point testing for luck in this fight because you're going to get you down to one and then you don't actually you know, save on any rounds. So you might as well just fight on. So that's what we'll do. Both miss. Oh. Ah, I turned auto roll on. Oh well. Oh, I can, I can not change that. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. No. Okay, we start. Oh, that that's that could be exploited. Oh, that's naughty. All right, so I can't re-roll. Okay, so yeah, fight on. Yay, we're winning this time. Oh God. There we go. We're triumphant. We have nine stamina left. Wasn't really cheating, was it? You know, we right, defeat the zombie. All right, hang on. Oh, quick dice, right? Okay. God, play. Defeat the zombie. Uh, do you want to leave the room, or do you want to investigate the mantelpiece, the box thing? What do you want to do, guys? So we've just beaten up a zombie. We're not doing very well, like, you know. Stomach 9 out of 18. Fear of halfway, you know, a th sorry, a, th a third of the way there with the fear. And uh, we don't have a weapon. So. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We'll go and look at the box. <laughs> yes, I get it. Okay. Uh. The box rattles when you touch it. There's something solid inside. You undo the catch and open the lid inside. Uh, oh, oh, open the lid. Very small. Full stop. Inside you find a small key. You try the key in the door and it fits. The key turns and unlocks the door. What door? Allow you to leave the room. Okay, so the door was locked. <laughs> Guys. Uh, okay. Um, allow you to leave the room. You find you are in the corner of the landing. There's an unmarked door to your left. So we... Wow. So that, that room kind of sucked. <laughs> oh, brilliant. You, uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, you're in the corner of the landing. There is an unmarked door to your left. you want to go through it? Oh, straight ahead, so you can see the staircase leading downwards. Do you want to go that way? Okay, so do you want to go in the, the door or the stairs? So, obviously, at some point, you find out what that word means. Or, you, you know, you, you know, maybe one of the paintings will... Maybe the middle-aged man will warn you not to go in there. And... Uh, you know, so you'd know not to go in there. Much the same as you don't, you know. The woman tells you about the wine. Maybe the older woman will tell you about something else. So yeah, it's possible. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, Alright, so we are going to try the other door. <laughs> uh, Alright, we're going to go through it. The door opens into a narrow passageway which ends at a window. There is a door halfway along the left hand side. And a sign on the door identifies it as the Diabolus. Diabolus room. You wanna go you wanna go into the Diabolus room? Uh, do you wanna investigate the window? Or do you want to continue along the landing? Okay, so do you go to the door, do you wanna window or back to the landing?
I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? You know, but you know, don't let me sway you. Don't let me sway you. Pretty even. Gonna leave it a bit. In case anybody wants to have their say. Okay. It was close, but we're going through the door. Try this door. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, we can't possibly have two bad rooms at the same, you know, one after the other, can we? We went into one that was bad, so the other one must be good, yeah? Let's see. You step into the room and close the door behind you. Why? <laughs> The room is empty, and you heave a sigh of relief, falling back against the door to catch your breath. Uh, will you rest in this room, or will you try the window for a means to escape? Okay, so you wanna, you wanna try and rest, or you wanna go to the window? Yeah, our stamina is pretty low. Our, our stamina is, is 9 out of 19. So, you know, rest could be good, but... Well, we're here, so might as well take a nap, huh? Sparrow. Shadowhawk. Well, let's see if people agree with you. It's reasonably close, though one is pulling ahead. I haven't learned anything else. Okay, so 60% say that we should rest here. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, there you go. You sit on the bed, trying to work out how on earth you can escape from this place. The room you are in seems safe enough, and the rest refreshes you. Increase your stamina by two points. How very generous. But a few moments later, the wind whistling through the curtains attracts your attention. You glance over towards the window. So is this the window in the room? Or the window... I guess it's the window in the room. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> a soft voice is calling your name. You leap back against the wall, while across the room a stranger, a strange shape is forming. A human figure is passing through the very wall itself and entering the room. At last the figure is on... At least the figure is almost human, but its head is missing. <laughs> As it materializes before you, the voice becomes clearer. It comes from a head that it, that is carried not on the Apparition's soldiers, I, I, yeah, there, you know what I mean, uh, but in its hand, which hangs down at its side. The side is horrible, and its ghostly blood drips uh, onto the carpet from the severed head. You're getting two fear points. Boy. So if you roll low fear points in this game, you're kind of screwed, aren't you? Will you stay and hear what the ghost has to stay, say, or will you run? Okay, so it's a, do we stay or do we go? There's a song in there somewhere. Oh, all right, there you go. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, I get it. We're gonna stay. We're gonna stay, we're gonna listen to the bloody head. Alright. This the disembodied head speaks, Prepare yourself for death, miserable mortal, <laughs> it gloats. <laughs> for the evil that is in this place is gonna be escaped. The house of drama has drawn you here for one purpose. Before the night is out, you will join me and my companions in the netherworld. Our fate will be yours. You will forever haunt the place that caused your death. With these words, a mocking laughter fills the room. The apparition turns back through the wall. As it does, laughter fades. But the fright gives you two fear points. Ooh, more fear. We have eight out of twelve fear. 
Okay. Well. You leave the Diabulous room and are standing once more in the narrow corridor. Do you want to look at the window or do you want to uh, go to the landing? Wanna, okay, the window. Or the landing. Should we really go with hardcore mode, you know what I mean? <laughs> These games were pretty hardcore. These were the Dark Souls of, you know, the, 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 the time, you know? <laughs> Will I pay f Oh no, I'll be going to bed <laughs> at 12 points. Okay, well, apparently, we're going to press our look. We're going to look at the window. Happened to 12 fear? We lose the game. We die if we get to 12 fear. We just drop down dead. Okay. We're gonna look at the window. Curtains are drawn across the window and you approach cautiously. You gingerly pat the folds in the curtain and are relieved to find nothing there. Although they seem to be safe, you are still on your guard as you draw them apart. As you do so, a thunderclap booms outside and makes you jump, but you are safe. Perfectly ordinary window is uncovered. However, the heavy, the heavy iron bars on the outside are a little worrying. <laughs> Through the window, you see nothing but the rain burning, uh, running down. Rain is burning now, Christ. I'm not very good with the rain, am I, today? But curiously, the rain is avoiding one area. Could it be that the wind is blowing the rain away from this one corner? You bend down to take a closer look. Written in the condensation which is formed in the glass is a message. You read three words. Mordana in Abaddon. You repeat this message to yourself and rub it off the window in case anyone else should see it. <laughs> yeah, you want to help anybody else, would you? This message may be useful to you, and you will, re will realise when it is. You must now head back to the landing. Oh, okay, so... There you go. Window message. Mordana in Abaddon. Abaddon is a demon god. Yes, Abaddon is something bad. Um, yeah. Okay, a short distance further on, you come to the top of the main staircase, which leads downwards. Immediately opposite the staircase is an unmarked door. So do you want to go downstairs? Do you want to try the unmarked door? Or do you want to continue around the landing? Because we've still got that other door to do as well. Downstairs. Unmarked door. Isn't that in the unmarked door where we've just been, though? I'll bookmark this, and if you guys vote for that, I'll just go back. If it is the same thing, because, you know. Opposite the staircase is the mic door. It just seems... Well, it might not be. It might not be. Um, just kind of hard to... Anyway. Um, you might not even vote for it anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Mal. So I'll I'll just you know I'll, I'll add that as a bookmark. So you know if the, if the unmarked door, I mean you could always turn back straight away. I think. Anyway, so you know, shouldn't matter too much regardless of what you guys do. Didn't remember what number it was, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the amount. Of, well, you guys have uh, just to you know. Oh, yep. Yeah, you guys have sort of voted for it, so we'll see whether it's the same thing. Cause I'll be able to go back anyway. No. No, it's different. Okay, it's different. <laughs> okay, you step into a small storeroom. Uh, and close the door behind you. I love how we're always closing. We're always so polite, you know. Um, there are shelves on the left and right walls uh, on which various household objects are stored. In front of you, in the wall facing the door, is another door. 
Okay, do you want to search through the things on the shelves? Do you want to try the door opposite? Or you could return to the landing. Okay, so... Yeah, I know. I don't even know why I bother asking. Shelves. Door. Go. Back. Oh, what could you possibly pick? I do wonder what you are going to choose at this juncture. Oh my goodness, what a surprise. You have chosen to root through the shelves. <laughs> okay. Oh! Various items of crockery, cutlery, and food are kept in the storeroom, including a sharp meat knife, which you hide under your coat and use as a weapon in the future. The sharp knife adds three skill points in a fight. Well, it doesn't really. It just stops you losing fight, you know, skill points in fights. Um, on one shelf, you find several cloves of garlic, which you also take. There's also an unlabeled bottle of white liquid on another shelf. Okay, so we've got a weapon. We've got garlic. Is that even in a... Say, we don't have a um, inventory list. I got a, a sharp knife as a weapon, but anyway, I suppose it'll come up like automatically. Anyway, do you want to drink the liquid? Do you want to ignore the liquid and try a door at the back of the room, or do you want to leave? Okay, so do you want to drink it? A door, or do you want to go back? That was a good find. Well done. <laughs> like it, FK. Okay, it's pretty, it's pretty academic. We're, we're going through the door. We're not going to drink that weird liquid. We're just going to go through it. Okay, so go through the door at the back of the storeroom. I predict this is going to be bad. Oh no! You step out of the storeroom into the hallway. Did I press the wrong thing then? Did I? Into a hallway. No, okay, I thought it was... Th okay. To your left, the hallway ends at a door which leads to the Shatian room. Do you wish to try the door? Um, almost opposite the is the Mammon room. Or if you're not interested in either of these, you can go back to the landing. Okay. Okay, so do you want to go to the... Um, the, the Shatian door? The... the Come on, man. Come on. Oh, just go back. <laughs> Alright. You know what I mean anyway, if I spelled them wrong. It's Arabic for Satan. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad room, you know. Just because it's named after Satan doesn't mean that there's gonna be sitting in it. I mean, I'm sure he's got better things to do with the house in some room in some, you know, house in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you guys have decided that it's 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 the uh, yeah mana yeah not the mama mama mana yeah okay that one. The room you enter looks well lived in. It is a bedroom, a large bed covered in a yellow bedspread dominates the room. Clothes are strewn about the floor and a tap is running faucet, for use American uh, in the wash basin, basin in the corner. The clothes suggest it is a woman's room but no one is about. Will you call out to announce yourself in case anyone is in the room? Do you want to search around it or do you want to leave? Do you want to call out? Do you want to search? I'll leave. Aha. Uh -huh. It seems 
that any semblance of manners and decency has completely left our character. As we instantly go rifling through some woman's belongings because she doesn't happen to be in line of sight. <laughs> Alright, well, so, well, okay, we're gonna search the room. Alright, fine. We're gonna search the room, see what we can find. Okay. You walk over to the mantelpiece and study trinkets scattered along it. Uh, a couple of lacquer boxes uh, and a picture frame with no picture flank a large plant pot with a broad bladed plant growing in it. The grate below, uh, in the grate below are several lumps of coal resting in a bed of paper. A fire ready to light, but somewhat, but something else is in the grate. A black and white photograph has been thrown on the coals. Do you want to check the contents of the boxes? Or do you want to pick up the photograph? I suppose it's which one you do first, Major Sloth. And thank you, yes, I, I know I have unique charisma. I'll always remember that. I have unique charisma, everybody. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> mm, pretty even, pretty even, pretty even. Hi, Grimith. Thanks for hosting. Uh, okay, I think we've made a decision. We're gonna look at the photograph. I'll try and pull it out from where it is anyway. So. Oh, God! You, you sit on your haunches and reach for the photograph. As you pick it up, you feel a heavy thud on top of your head. You slump to the floor, days, uh, and the plant pot which came crashing down on your head smashes on the floor. You lose three stamina points. Do we have enough stamina to continue? Oh, we do. Let's just check how much we've got. We've got eight out of 19. <laughs> well, push that over. Well, maybe a ghost. Possibly a ghost, do you think? Anyway. Uh, hi, tomorrow. Um... Okay, so... Yeah, we're still alive. We still get the photo, though. Don't we? Well, no, apparently not. Uh, you hear a rustling from the curtain and straighten up to look towards the window. You shudder with fright as the curtain opens before you. Bloody curtains in this game. Uh, just as quickly, they shut again. Then there is silence. You walk slowly over and grab them. But they are perfectly ordinary curtains. You gain one fear point from the shock. Are we all... Are we dead yet? Nine out of twelve. Jesus Christ. Do you want to leave the room or do you want to try and work out the mystery of the curtains? <laughs> so yeah, you can't look at the boxes, sorry. Do you want to leave the room or solve the mystery of the curtains? Well... Solving the mystery might, might involve stabbing them. What I think our character should do, really, is as soon as he enters, <laughs> as soon as he enters a, a room, is just like just to cut down the curtains. Simple, you know. That that will eliminate half of the hazards <laughs> that we encountered so far. Apparently, we have to solve the mystery. As you are puzzling over the curtains, you reach out to lean on the bed. But as you rest your weight on the bedpost, the whole bed shifts aside and you crash down to the floor! This is all very strange, a little scary. You gain one fear point and take one stamina point of damage. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, alright, well we're still alive. Oh boy. A rumbling from the opposite side of the room breaks your thoughts, sliding over. The carpet towards you and accelerating rapidly is one of the chests. Okay, now we haven't tested our luck yet, so our luck is still eight, right? 
So all we've got to do is roll the dice, two of them, and get under eight. Okay, you are lucky. But now our lucky is seven. See? Seven out of eight. A rumbling through the opposite side uh, of the room breaks your thoughts. Sliding over the carpet towards you. Okay, we're lucky, we're lucky, we're lucky, we're lucky. We're lucky. They're here. Uh. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you're lucky. But. Okay, in the nick of time, you spring aside and the chair speeds past you and crashes into the wall behind. You escape injury, but you gain one fear point. You had better leave now, um, the other room before the portal guys inside does you more damage. The ghostly manifestation is the final straw. You have reached the maximum fear. And you die of fright at the end. So, I, lo I love it. It's like, you know, you dodge the chair and they're just like, oh, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just dead. Well, all done, guys. Yeah. That's that. We got a couple of achievements, so that is something. Ah. Well, that was the house of hell. Exactly. Shadowhawk. Exactly. Ah. Yeah, those bloody curtains and the lack of tea. That's what it was. You know, you can't be. You know, you have tea minus six fear. It's the way it would work. Well, the skeletons, you know, would be uh, be about at some point. All right. Well, thank you for joining me tonight, guys. But I am going to retire to bed. It's been fun, but I've been talking a lot and uh, just rather stop right now. Um, but like I say, it's it's been a jolly good time. We tried out House of Hell. I also have something else to try next time we stream, um, which is called Starship Traveler. But I thought we'd do that one tonight. Um, Thank you to uh, Vosphoros who bought me these games um, and you guys in the chat have to thank him as well for the joy that they have brought tonight and uh, right again thank you all for joining me either on YouTube because I love this in his own video or on uh, Hitbox tonight it's been, it's been grand and I shall thank you uh, and, and, and say goodnight okay right cheers and Toodaloo, guys. Bye-bye.